Ready? Yeah. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Righto, Exorcist was a clean goddamn winner in the polls. So I figured I'd do a short video on my thoughts on why The Exorcist is so good as a movie. And there are many, many reasons. Um, first of all, it's just a tight, extremely grounded uh, story with absolutely brilliant suspense and horror. It takes its time um, because it came from Friedkin and Blatty. It came from a novel. Uh, the novel written by Blatty and made by Friedkin, Friedkin with uh, Blatty's input. It has that old-fashioned... Uh, extremely grounded common sense plot structure um, what do I mean by that well it's in that direct lineage of all the year it cleanly fits into the writers lineage of stories like who goes there basically the the brilliant old science fiction and horror lineage where the characters take extremely logical and grounded next steps And the steps they take, um, they also fit uh, cleanly into the 
movie in terms of like point that the movie's trying to make and the tone of the movie. Um, for example, like the mother has the daughter and the daughter has like very, very serious problems. The mother doesn't know what what's happening with the daughter, doesn't know she's possessed. So like problem solvingly, she um, gets the daughter screened for every single uh, disease. And then after she eliminates that, she looks for brain tumors. And then after that, uh, after she eliminates like brain tum tumors and lesions, um, she turns to mental illness. And then only as like, a last resort after she has um, eliminated all the secular causes does she turn to religion um, that kind of makes sense like especially given like the current day Thank you. like what do I mean by that I mean current day religion particularly Christianity not so much Islam but definitely Christianity gets pretty badly subverted on pretty much all angles by basically Marxists that have infiltrated the free west. Um, it also grounds Kar Karis and mixes his character in the story extremely well. Like the first thing he does, because he's a priest with shaken faith, is he immediately attempts to catch the demon in like logical traps or lies. And like that just fits into his thought process and emotional character arc of having lost his faith when his mother died and like sort of regaining it throughout the movie, throughout the trials. Um, and obviously it's like, it's further grounded because his next logical steps are him gathering evidence for what he would need for the church to allow an exorcism to happen. And he's going like, through all of this, like, very reluctantly because of his weakened faith sort of thing. Uh, another thing it does well is very rare for a horror movie to do well. Um, it blends its emotional character arcs for its characters into the movie extremely well. Like, um, they're absolutely brilliant. With, like, the mother, you know, exhausting literally every single secular option before turning to faith as one does like as a last resort in the current day um you've got uh the Karis character with his loss and rediscovery of faith by interaction with literal demons and if not his full rediscovery of faith his literal acting out of the faith um, regardless of faith, by following the example of Jesus and practicing self-sacrifice in order to get the demon out of the girl right at the end, and physically as far away from the girl as he can, subsequently dying in the attempt. So, like, the character arcs are just brilliant. Um, so how about the scares? Uh, yeah, they're brilliant as well. This is just another area where the movie kind of knocks it out of the park. Like, look, there's a reason why it's like a 10 out of 10. So firstly, in order to scare, you need to first build the tension. Um, the movie does this brilliantly in a, like, perfect, perfectly grounded way. Whether it is, whether it's like Marin right at the start in, like, Iraq or Assyria or wherever he is, finding his idol in his expedition and then subsequently like going over to the statue of the demon which is Pazuzu that um, possesses the girl and all the while there's like a massive dog fight in the background it's not it's not like overt it's like subtle but it's also like a dog fight is absolutely vicious those things are trying to kill each other they're probably trying to kill each other for food like, it's just, it's like, it, it's perfect tone, like, current day is like brutal sort of survival sort of thing. Like, it further builds tensions at the sharp cuts, at the cliffhangers of each failed, like, secular m medical investigation. It also has, like, pretty sharp cuts where Karis 
he's investigating the evidence, like, when he's gathering it in order to authorise an exorcism by the church. And, like, the sharp cuts sort of match your reaction to the movie at the same time. Like, the thing happens, and then you have an opportunity for it to sort of integrate into your thinking process as you're watching the movie. It's not, like, straight on to the next thing. You're given no time to absorb it sort of thing. So it um, it all builds tension in a brilliant and perfectly grounded and meaningful way. Uh, it's perfectly blended with the character arcs and it's not superficial. Uh, the scares themselves are like also blended perfectly. Uh, whether it's like, you know, the superimposed Captain Howdy popping up during like investigations of cold temperatures or noises in the attic like both of those are like signs of demonic activity by the way all the brutal set pieces of like the demonic possession breaking like Reagan down or the taunting of the demon um, to Karis about his mother's madness and like suffering and death or his loss of faith um, because of his mother's suffering or like they're perfectly bl blended and grounded uh, within the story structure and the character's emotional arcs um, that's extremely rare for just any movie to do like a regular movie to like accomplish competently let alone like a horror movie and let alone like a, a, a religious horror movie like <laughs> like yeah very very rare um, and also like you've got the other like added implications of the horror in the story the implication like that the demons are like perfect witnesses to our choices and souls and because they're perfectly they're perfect witnesses to it they know exactly what to say to like break us down and that sort of thing like psychologically like that's not to be underestimated as like a element in a horror like story either like the fact just the very fact of that is um is quite harsh and like that they're there witnessing and behind choices it just goes to show like both Friedkin and Blatty have like lived lives and thought about these things and asked these like themselves questions of religion and faith like especially during times of loss and stuff like that and like it just adds like this depth and understanding and experience and it just shines through the the source material in the movie it's like a 10 out of 10 movie like even Karis's like sort of subliminal um, horror dream sequence which is indicating the passing on of his mother um, in his grief where he's like running along trying to wave to his mother to get like her attention and she goes into the subway like implying she's moving on to somewhere else and then you get like the flash of Captain Howdy during that like that's just absolutely horrifying and like he's like sort of mumbling in his sleep during the sequence it just it goes together into this like unique thing like that we're completely powerless to death and then subsequent judgment um, after we die sort of thing and it just like adds the perfect tone to the movie uh, perfectly fits in with Karis's um, character arc of shaken faith following the death of his mother and it's just it's brilliant like there's a reason why it is one of the best horror movies and it's not because horror movies are shallow it's because of the characters and the character arc and the writing it all shines through uh, it also blends elements of this extremely well with tone um, just because it has like a sort of a crisp sometimes desaturated uh, tone it just makes the movie very very bleak and it fits the tone um, with Karis's grief at the same time 
and because his mother passed away in like such a, a bad way like she was losing her mind in her apartment from isolation basically and he eventually flipped out and died um, it also mixes in elements of mental illness when he goes to visit her in the home and the, the tone fits there um, extremely well as well um, and it also blends with the story that they're not sure if it's like demonic possession or mental Ill illness at the start of the possession they're like trying to rule it out like obviously the movie is famous because you know it's in the title it's called the exorcist but it's not yet known in the plot if you're watching it like raw whether or not it is legitimate uh in addition to like the mental illness the bleak tone and like colors and like desaturated colors and white colors and all that sort of thing um lends itself extremely well to the brutality of the invasive medical procedures like the secular medical procedures they're doing on reagan to try and rule out whether or not it's like a, a tumor or a disease or uh, a mental illness like all of them are pretty they're brutal they're, and they're depicted as brutal and it fits in the tone as well So look, it's just a great movie. It's blended together extremely well. Like every aspect of it, you can tell it come from a very competent, not only novel writer, but director as well. Um, I don't have any real criticisms of it. Like one may be that audience today, audiences today can't really pay attention to a story as well. Um, so it may seem slow to them, but like, <laughs> Given the relative quality the? of movies these days, particularly like ones with like secular Marxism values in them, Thank like you. the depth and point of this movie, like it's it's depth, it's experience, like the whole the whole deal with it, it just comes across as much less shallow. So like I couldn't even like levy that criticism given the you know, relativity, or the relative, you know, quality, lower quality of movies these days. But look, great movie, um, it very much deserves to be part of the cultural identity of the free west and in culture in general. Mm. Um, I absolutely despise all the current day re-attempts to like remake it that failed to capture the magic, the grounding, um, the quality, the point of the movies for like shallow superficial nonsense with special effects. Um, they just simply don't understand the themes of the movie and like that's fair enough like these days you're not it's it's too secular compared to you know past movies right um yeah the the remakes are terrible they're basically just you know desperately trying to take its name to attempt at some sort of unearned legitimacy as a movie where they would like never really exist on their own like on their own they're like five out of ten movies and yeah um the only exception in terms of sequels to this movie was pro would probably be the the third movie in the series because that one was also very good and look this review didn't even really cover other things like like Burke's death and the demon's taunting of the mother in Burke's voice like it just implies that the demon is behind so much of the shit that's happening in the movie um and just suffering in general in humanity like demons and shit are like behind a ton of the choices and influences that lead to our choices that cause suffering and it's just like a cool little theme of the of the movie that it does that like 
the the kill in it is like completely off screen like Burke's death is completely off screen but it's just described in this like bleak hopeless tone how he died he had his head turned completely around um, so he had his like he was grabbed by the head had his neck broken and had his head turned completely around and then was thrown out an open window down the same steps that Karis ends up falling down at the end and because of that um, like the theme of that is that it matches some um, black black magic rituals and satanic rituals and shit where they um, did face idols and stuff like that and it's not dwelled on like it like if you were to compare that to an exorcist movie these days that would be shown in like full graphic detail and it would lose a ton of the the tone and the suspense of having the detective just describe it describe it to the mother like a ton of the impact of it you wouldn't appreciate it like it would be absorbed differently you, it would the absorption of it wouldn't be grounded to act in service to the story it would be oh you're showing it you kind of story's kind of not grounded anymore um you've just had a big horrible gory special effects sequence um you've got to reground your story after that and it just it wouldn't work. Instead, you he here you get that that constant, consistent tone, um, and the story remains grounded because, hey, look, it's just the de detective describing what happened to Burke. It's still a bit of a mystery, like how he got there, because they they're not a hundred percent sure if Reagan killed her, killed him or not. Um, because he was found at the bottom of steps outside of Reagan's window, so it was unsure whether or not he had his neck broken by Reagan and then was thrown out the window. So like it has that mystery element to it. It is grounded that the detective is investigating it. It's grounded that the detective is not sure about it. And then afterwards you get the horrible confirmation by Reagan herself, um, possessed by the demon, when it taunts the mother in Burke's voice. Like, it is absolutely horrible, and it's brilliant in the story, and it just fits and works in the horror story so well. Whereas, like, one day it would just be this big horrible gory special effects sequence and then afterwards you would not even be able to pay attention to the story because you know you've just destroyed all your grounding in the story for a big stupid set piece and now nothing matters <laughs> like after you destroy your grounding for a big set piece it become something else. It's no longer a story you're immersed in, it's some sort of magical fiction now. And that just takes away from the tension and the immersion that you need to have in a horror movie to be invested in it. If, if you know what I mean. Like, not horror movies in general, but this genre of horror movie which is like serious horror drama um, with suspense you really need that grounding like the other ones have their place for example like a goofy horror comedy you wouldn't want to ground that like you'd want to ground it but you'd want to ground it in a way that was charming rather than serious um, you'd want to control the tone there and have it be like a bit absurd um, but you, for this type of movie, for suspense, for tension, you absolutely need to be invested in the characters and you need to have the characters um, be grounded and you need the tone to be consistent. You need the, the whole lot of it. And I don't think modern 
movies understand this. Modern movies immediately, you know, destroy all the grounding for big silly special effects and they blend their... Uh, they blend their tones between goofy horror movies and serious horror movies. And because they blend the tones, they attempt neither and they... <laughs> They perpetrate this stereotype of horror movies that horror movies can't be serious or good movies. They can only ever be like six out of ten movies because, you know, uh, it's all about the gore and the shock and everything like that. It's You can't have like a, an emotional character arc in a horror movie like properly. Like certain studios these days are trying to do it more and more, like A24 and all that, but... Um, yeah, like, horror movies have the most potential to, you know, get by because the expectations for them aren't high and they're not high because of the stereotype of horror movies that they're usually pretty shitty. So when you get one like this that can exist on its own merit without being a horror movie because it has like very, very competent, you know, writing and characters and character arcs. Um, and it's all relevant and it's all pretty original. Um, yeah, you just get a 10 out of 10 horror movie. Like the expectations weren't high and because they weren't high to begin with, um, it's a lot easier for them to subvert the low expectations in being a great movie. Um, don't get me wrong, this movie didn't need that in order to succeed. Like, it was a good movie anyway. But it seems even better because of the low expectations of horror movies in general. But, like, with this movie... Like, in particular, you can tell that this is grounded in a a foundation, a culture. Like, it, it's grounded in Christianity. Whereas, like, a modern-day movie, like... I don't know, let's take, like, a semi-decent modern-day movie, like Evil Dead. Uh, the remake of Evil Dead, which was alright, it was like 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 6 and a half. Um, that doesn't have any grounding in, like, a foundation of culture. It is purely thrown out as a story. It is pretty much purely superficial. Um, yeah, it's just... They're out there, they find a book, in the book, the book has evil in it. Um, yeah, it's not really a metaphor for anything, it's not really grounded in anything, it's not grounded in, um, Christianity, it's not grounded in mental illness or anything like that. It is literally, there's an external force, the external force isn't necessarily a metaphor for anything. Uh, the external force is just lit literal, uh, a, literally a demon. A demon from a book that they accidentally let out and it possesses and kills them like okay fair enough you can make a movie about that you can even ground it okay like that movie doesn't do too bad of a job of grounding it but it goes like well off the rails with like all the kills and everything but you, you hit the point where it, it's okay You've done that now, but it's all superficial. It was all within its own structure, sort of thing. It was all within its own premise. It doesn't tack on to any of our current culture. Um, it doesn't add any experience or try and make a point about anything or anything like that, if you know what I mean. Like, by the end of it, it's just purely superficial. Like, to the point where the demon comes out of the ground and there's blood everywhere because it's literally raining from the sky. Like, it's like, okay, 
you've raised the stakes as high as they can go and still I'm not really feeling much here because <laughs> it's like it's not grounded in anything it's like okay it's just a random story there's a demon she's fighting the demon with a chainsaw there's blood raining from the sky okay like what's what's the point how does this fit into anything you know doesn't fit into the culture yeah you've 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 got no real grounding at that point um doesn't fit into any of our structures that, like it doesn't fit into religion yeah it's it's just okay you're just like a big gore spectacle at that point And at that point, it, it ceases to have a soul. And that's something the exorcist... It does, that never happens with the exorcist. The exorcist always maintains its soul behind, behind the movie. And because of that, it's one of the best movies ever made. On me. Come on. No! no! Um.
It's only a matter of time! Stay. 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 